I'd like to ask you something about the gang activity that is going on in Chicago. I would like to address this question to people and folks. I would like to address this question to both of you. Should they let Larry Hoover, who is the leader, I think, of Vice the GDs and Gangster Disciples, yeah. and should they let Jeff Ford, who was the leader of the L. Rookins out of jail since they have the the government has demonstrated that they cannot control or minimize the criminal activity by suggesting that the National Guards come in. If they let Larry Hoover, should they let Larry Hoover and Jeff Ford out of jail if they could stop one person from pulling the trigger? I well, like that. I forgot what jail. I forgot what jail Larry Hoover is in Jeff Ford. They're in Supermax. Okay. Yeah. Out okay. in Colorado. Okay. Yeah, but I, my thing is this: I have respect for both of them because one, here you have Jeff Ford and Larry Hoover who had leadership qualities, and they could have been. Um, um, they they were around different individual groups that were. I'm talking people from the Black Panther Party, and they knew about it. But they wanted to involve, get you know, involved in criminal activity. But they were, you know, but I'm saying that they they did try to do some positive things out here in the community. I'm talking about certain groups that were connected to them, like the 21st Century Vote. Mm -hmm. Those, were, you know, they were part of, you know, hooked up with, you know, the, you know, Gangster Disciples, the Black Disciples, okay. Gator Bradley, and all them guys and stuff like that. You know, my thing is that, but they hit the government came down on them. You see, you can't have it both ways. The government and and this was brought out by Lucini Eugene Perkins in his book, The Explosion of Black Chicago Street Gangs. Okay, he talked about how basically you, you had these gangs that were do doing this stuff, and they were basically like the Negro Contras, so, right? Mm -hmm. They were destabilized in Woodlawn and all over throughout Chicago, and they were paid by the University of Chicago and others and stuff, connected to the University of Chicago and other organizations and groups and institutions to do what they did. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so they used them, they pimped them. And then once they got tired of them, then they say, well, you can just take these colors, you know, these Negroes and storm in jail. And then they gave them some money, and then they knew they were going to blow the money and, and misappropriate the funds, so they locked them up for that. They had Nixon, uh, yeah, Nixon, and this was during the time when Nixon was in office. He was a bigger crook than all of them, okay? Uh, Jeff Ford and all, I mean, he's big, I mean, just a bigger criminal. I mean, I don't, I, I have a real problem with that white-collar crime, that black-collar crime, or that white crime, but I just have, it's crime, is crime. But, but in the book, by Lucini Perkins, the exposing black Chicago street gang. It talks about how Nixon and his officials invited those members of the street gangs to the White House, and many, and and one of my relatives involved, David Barksdale. That's my uncle, right? I'm scared of you. No, I'm just saying. He, <laughs> go he, ahead, go he ahead, bro. I mean, there were I'm others, just joking. I'm just saying there were others who didn't go. I'm just saying relatives that, that I'm talking about people who were involved, in, and they just decided not to go, and they made a, a right decision because they knew they were going to be used by the Nixon or uh, Nixon officials and stuff like that for political reasons. So. They, they, they used them, and then they decided they're going to discard them. So after they used them, after they, do, they had people secretly fund them and provide resources to them, use them, like I said, as Negro Contras, like the Contras that was fighting the uh, Daniel Ortega and the Sandinistas in Nicaragua. Hmm. And I, I would like to ask you the same thing, Dr. Lee Warren. Mm -hmm. If Jeff Ford and Larry Hoover, of course, if they could come out and they could influence one person from not pulling the trigger, should they be let out of the supermax? And should they? First of all, they should stay where they're at. Okay. Two, first thing. Because mm -hmm. what they did to the black culture mm -hmm. and undermined it. In other words, now first of all, the, 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 the black culture is already in tatters. Mm -hmm. Let me explain by that. 70% of the males are raised by women. Yeah. That's your problem right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got a problem. Mm -hmm. See, see, not being raised and you have no family structure, mm -hmm. a cohesive type of structure mm -hmm. to hold the community together. So once you destroy the community, you know, that, that nucleus, the man's gone or he's in jail or whatever. The woman's doing the best she can if she can, if she can do anything. Mm. Throw a little bit of drugs in there. So what you have is a culture that is totally dysfunctional. 
Mm-hmm. Totally dysfunctional. And who come out of that, if they come out of that, they are, well, want some help for some good people. But most of the time, that's the problem. Because you go to county jail or prison and say, how many of you had a father in here? <laughs> Nobody had a father in here. Yeah. And see, when I was growing up in the 50s, it was common. Everybody in our classroom had a, had a mother and father. Yeah. The, you know, you couldn't yeah. conceive with somebody in a yeah. family that didn't have it. It was one parent. But, but you know what? But, but you say even, even if they could influence a few. Well, let, me, let me finish. Okay. If they could get out, I'm going to show you what's going to happen. The thing is so ferocious. These young guys, compared to what Jeff Ford had and uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Larry, 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 Larry who? Had, Larry who? They would have probably assassinated him because you know what? Those young guys are not going to be put on the type of discipline that uh, they had when they were running the organization. And those that have actually got out of prison and tried to go back to the old ways of trying to run the, uh, the system, mm-hmm. these young boys popped them because they, they want the same privileges that they had. Mm-hmm. They said, no, you ain't going to come here and run nothing here. But you say, yeah. so leave them in. Are you saying they should stay in too? Uh, well, my thing is this. Um, you know, I'm kind of in between, you know, because I'm going to tell you, be honest with you, I mean, like I said, I saw the least equality of these people, and I understand just what they, and I've seen the documentary films about their lives, so, as well as read about them. So, I have respect for both of them, so, but the problem, I have, my thing is that you have a criminal element, you have the criminal element, plus just what the, Dr. Warren said, these young guys, they're going to say, well, you old so and you can try to tell me what, you know, and then they're going to say, we're going to take care of you, you know, you know they're going to, they will, there's, there, you're going to hear about either one or both of them being taken out, That's you right. know, and I'm just saying because you got an element out here, this whole drug situation, the whole gang thing is totally different. That's right. It's been reinvented, they've been restructured, they changed a lot of stuff around, it, crime is not the way it used to be. You, at, at that time, I mean, you got these different little gangs and groups, and they're involved with all kinds of activity. You got the social media stuff. You got all, it's, it's, it's a whole different ball game out here. And I just think that this, um, the element I'm talking about, Larry Hoover and them, Jeff Ford, I, I think, I'm not going to say they'd be safe for them to stay where they are, but I'm just saying they need to look at the system. And they need to really think about if they were released and stuff, what would happen, what would occur and anything like that. So my thing, my best bet for them is just they need to think about it before they release them and stuff like that. Or they uh, try to press for the release because they're going to have to have 24-hour security. Yeah. These people, I'm telling you, the people I saw, because I was out in the community doing stuff, and I saw some young guys that were just ferocious. I'm just talking about I, had, a- I got in a physical fight <laughs> with a young guy over some stuff because I was talking to my daughter on the phone mm-hmm. about some stuff. And, and then he said, I need to be talking to the woman that he's talking to. This is in the Walgreens mm-hmm. on 86 in College Grove here in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we ended up getting a fight because he, he, just, he felt that he could intimidate me. He's scared. These young people, they're totally different. You're dealing with generations. Not only they the E generation, talking about the entitlement, entitlement generation, but you also have the F U generation, where they have F value, elf this, elf older people, <laughs> and, and, and that's their attitude. I'm just telling so, you for so, what I so, see out here. So are you There's two different groups out here. So you both they're, they're running out here and doing whatever they feel they need. So, so but, they, you know, go ahead, basically sorry. what y'all are saying, if they were released, they have zero influence, no one. We're making a generalization with respect. Let me say this. Compare the body bags mm-hmm. that Hoover and uh, what's his name had compared to what they with what the use today the street. They're popping somebody for just nothing. Yeah. A woman sitting in the car reading, he just blow shoot, like, you just don't do that. Well, yeah, cold, Something is really psychological. You're awful. You, you've been yeah. turned over mm-hmm. to the dark forces. I don't know who and that the, didn't exist back when Hoover and them was there. I don't know who the Latin King, king chief is, though. I was going to I think Rico. I'm not even going to say the Latin Kings. I was going to say his name, mm-hmm. the Latin King. I knew you were talking about him. What's his name? I don't know. Okay. I mean, but I know. I, I, mean, I, I, I remember I, the name. I just, you know. Yeah. I mean, since we're talking about gangs and stuff. But, but the thing about many of the gangs been kind of, talking about the Mexican black gangs, they've been neutralized, infiltrated. They've already monitored them. The real gangs is just like the Daily. Daily, Patrick uh, Thompson, uh, Patrick That's Thompson right. Daily. He was part of his family was, was gang connected. The hamburgers. I mean, I mean, yeah. yeah I mean, th- that was just a social club. They, they, they were controlled by organized crime. I'm right. talking about if you read the book Capture Cities. I um, mean, if you read, I'm talking, you read. Um, there's a number of books that lay out the, the Richard Day Daily how they were how by over demerits and about the Crown and others talking about their, their connection to gangs and organizations and how Richard J. Daly denied that there was organized crime or gang here in Chicago. And he was a puppet of the mob, okay? 
And if you look at the Malcolmated Bank and who controlled the pensions and stuff like that, I mean, you got his brother. You got, well, not brother, but you got William Daly. He was on the board there, okay, of the bank. But who was on the board of directors? Well, the board of directors was Ernest Cumberland, the son-in-law of Tony Ocardo. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got the Crusoe family, the little Crusoe, come on down. The Crusoe that beat up Leonard Clark, you know, they, that's the little clan, I call him the Klansman, he's the junior Klansman. Mm -hmm. the, the, the junior, you know, that, that beat up uh, Crusoe, that beat up uh, Leonard Clark back in the 1990s, mm -hmm. attacked, almost killed him. Mm -hmm. Okay, his family got ties to labor groups, organized crime, and then also to these banking, these businesses, stuff like that. So you got organized crime. If that you know, I'm talking about the, the white organized crime that's alive and well. So you know what they listening intensely, man. I, you well, know what y'all flattering me because you know what you're not calling. So you know what that indicates that you are watching. And you well, I never heard this before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the okay. Yes. Just give time to observe. You know, Thank observe. you. you know, the oh, up, well, if you want to join in, you can. The telephone number is three one two seven. Three eight one eight four five because I can run my mouth. Oh, nothing but day. But getting back to y'all, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna ask y'all. So since they're not calling, I'm gonna ask something about Russia. But I want to ask you about the regentrification okay. that is going on in Chicago. There's re, I mean, regentrification is going on in the east side of Chicago, and what they're doing is. They're going up on the property taxes. Mm -hmm. They're sending in building inspectors because they know, excuse the expression, they know damn well a house is not up to code that's 75 years old and people are barely making it. So what do you do? Because the Obama library is coming mm -hmm. on the east side of Chicago. What do you do in that situation if they're working to push you out systematically by sending in legions of building inspectors and going up on property taxes, both of y'all, in Chicago. What can they do? Yeah. Well, they can do one or two things. <laughs> Get whatever money they can and move, <laughs> okay. okay, or two, stay and fight and, and uh, see what rights that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, you know, but they can always clear a declare in a domain. So, so the problem is, yeah. is that... Listen, Chicago has went to a, a, a very deep metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. If you went back to 1950 mm -hmm. and, and, and the 60s and 70s, 60 or 70% of Chicago was blue collar and they were middle class. Mm -hmm. Now, on the south side, I'm talking about on the south side because everybody was working the steel mill, yeah. all these plants. Now, do you know what the, what the average uh, on the south and west side of the usually uh, uh, browns, you know, um, African Americans and uh, 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 Latinos and stuff, they make ba just barely above poverty, maybe 30, yeah. 35,000. But see, the average salary in Chicago to live comfortable is at least 65,000. Right. Oh, right. See? <laughs> so if you're making 30, you know, that, that's half. Yeah. You can't make it here with these high taxes uh -huh. uh, and, and et cetera. So right. then what, what they decided to do, a lot of this property, like that, that since they built that That's library, right. that property, right. same thing they did with the, with, with, with the garden. Mm -hmm. Same way what they did with over, in, uh, over in the, uh, on the north side with uh, what you call a garden. Um, mm -hmm. okay, the, uh, Gil uh, not Old Gil God. Not uh, uh, the, the, the What they call them? I can skip a name. Are you not talking about the Lincoln Yards project? No, no, I'm talking about the, the projects they told out on North Avenue all around in there. Uh, oh, yes, yes, over there. there you see. That's Lincoln Park. Mm -hmm. When the property you got... Cabrini Green. That's it, Cabrini Green. They told the people, y'all got to go, because you know what? We can get rid of these properties and sell them for uh, a lot for half a million, million dollars. And y'all on the dole here. <laughs> see, and y'all cost us money, and the city's half broke. Mm -hmm. So then they said, Go. That's why they put them all the red light cameras. Yeah, but, but you want to comment on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> I definitely get Look, the, the, what the 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 uh, you know what Chicago is doing. See, the thing about it, it's totally ridiculous. The University of Chicago is one of the key institutions involved in this and stuff. As a matter of fact, Dr. Lance Williams was on WVON radio a few days ago talking about that, and we're talking about this group now talking about demanding reparations from the you know University of Chicago and others. So talking about over a billion dollars or something like that, and it's a game being played because then you had a person on today on WVON today on the 18th of February. On WON, talking to Perry Small, talking about, and he's from the University of Chicago, he's a doc doctoral student, graduate student, uh, he's majoring in astrophysics, right? And, and so there's a game being played where you got these phony groups and everything with the University of Chicago is creating, you know, these phony, 
you know, organization and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they basically trying, what they do is that they're trying to trick our people into accepting this money and stuff, resource stuff. So they say, well, now we gave you reparation. Now you, you, you that's it. That's the line. And so, so our people is, 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 is being tricked into buying this. But the, what's going on is that this gentrification, regentrification, gentrification can be also used for positive. That you can have people in the black community go and buy up a neighborhood just like Dr. Yeah, Dr. Grayson talks about Dr. Grayson, Michael Grayson talks about he has a group in New York, home in New York, talking about how you, you can buy up a black people, can buy up a neighborhood, buy up a certain area, a block or two blocks, and just try and clear it and then create it for working class black families to come in to live and stuff. So, justification is now all that negative, it's now all that negative. But the thing about it is that you have those who weaponize justification. I'm talking about those people, part of the group that put out this plan called the Chicago 21 plan. Mm -hmm. That's the Chicago Central Area Committee. Mm -hmm. They put out this plan in order that they felt that they were going to get control of this. This area, they're starting Green and Green in 1970. They're going to right. try to gentrify that area and clear because they envision what they call the white city. <laughs> Read the book Devil in the White City. Yeah. Mm. They talked about the devil, the white city, and been talking about this for under when Daniel Burnham and the Burnham plan, mm. where you talked mm -hmm. about the World's Fair in the 1890s. So, so you have these groups specifically working together to do this. The Metropolitan Planning Council, the city department of planning, they all were working together to try to gentrify and they weaponize the gentrification and stuff like that to try to neutralize black people. People. That's why if you looked at Hyde Park the way it yeah. looked years ago, you know, okay. Hyde Park, you know, you had a lot of black businesses in Hyde Park. That's you know, right. Chicago came in and cleared that area out, tore down business, built this other stuff, built the tennis courts where right there on 55th and College Road. Those were black businesses that ran along there. They gentrified it and took that land, then they used what they call. The land acquisition, they call land, but that's the University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. The Southeast Chicago Commission is the land acquisition arm of the University of the University of Chicago. Then you got the Medical Center Commission. Okay. You got the Medical Center Commission, part of U of I, University of Illinois. Okay. Got it. You know thing. what? We're running low on time, but sure. you know what? The last, I'm going to get to Russia, sure. but I want to ask you something sure. about the people in Chicago. Why is it they got rid of Todd Stroger and he just wanted to go up on the budget? One penny. Okay. One penny. And they put Prep Winkle there, and she said she would not go up on the taxes, but Todd Stroger had balanced it. All it was was one penny. Mm -hmm. And they got upset about it. Real okay. quick, why? Why? That's all he want. I don't, no, please. <laughs> Look, he, just very simply, he wasn't part of the game. Oh, that's what it is. He was an outsider compared to Per Winkle. Okay. See, and, and they had an agenda. Now, who you think would better fit their agenda? Oh. Per Winkle or him? And the Cook County Board. Okay. I, and the mm. Cook County Board, remember, it's a very powerful organization, yeah. controls a lot of funds. Yeah. See? Yeah. And, and they, they, they didn't want him to get in there and run loose. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. then we're going to come to Russia. I'm going to do this real quick. One, the Todd Soldier, well, his family, you know, you got to think, I um, mean, you know, you're right, he wasn't, I mean, to a certain extent, but he also, he came from family that had political connections. You know, John Soldier, right? Big John Soldier, his father and stuff had political connections. He played along, played along, but the problem was that he had a young man who was able to balance the budget. When Daly couldn't balance the budget, when the governor couldn't balance the budget, oh, he was the only one, okay? That was another thing. That was one thing. And then, too, you had people like Beavers that was, um, that was advising him, too. That was also part of the problem, too. Nah, but also, nah. uh, Tony Pettwinger did, uh, even though she used that against him for using it going on one, but she turned around and did the same thing, and they started yeah. calling her Queen Sugar. Yeah. The sugar tax, right? Yeah. So you had people like uh, Mays Jackson uh, that was on WBON yeah, yeah. and Todd Stroger that was on WBON a couple years ago that was calling her Queen Sugar and stuff. I'm going to so, tell you a story so, about, so, so, about, but about I, but who, who made him lay no, on. No, no, okay. but, I, but I know about but I'm just saying mm -hmm. that was a part of it. So I'm saying I think that he did an excellent job as the president of the Cook County Board for those four years he was in there. Right, and I he think did he did that. a really good job. He knew what he was doing. But I, the problem was that they want him out just like Dr. Lee Warren said. They didn't want because he wouldn't play the game and stuff like that. And then you had also, you know, like Tony Petwinkle who has supported Supported the gentrification, all that stuff, because she's with the University of Chicago, got a bachelor's, a bachelor's degree for the University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. People need to know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know what? I want to, this, because we're running a long time, I want to ask yeah. you, there's, there's a major um, offensive that may be going sure. on between Russia mm -hmm. and the United States and NATO. Sure. I want to ask you, is Putin wrong for wanting to, um, not wanting, what's the, what's the name of the country? Ukraine, Ukraine. not yes, to join right. 
the um, NATO. NATO, NATO right. because it's Putin wrong because he said they got missiles in Poland that are 100 miles away from from Russia. But we could play when there were missiles being sent to, to mm. Canada. OK. And it's 100 miles away. Is Putin wrong? Is he wrong? Well, no, it's the same thing in reverse in the Cuban crisis in 1960 with JFK, yeah. when they put the missiles in Cuba. Yeah. And, and, and they had the same problem, and JFK told me, well, if you don't get them out, we're going to move them out. Now they, did, they, they tried to use the same strategy on, on the Russia by encircling the, the Russia with all these... See, what happened? When Russia fell in, in uh, 1989, 1899, mm -hmm. in other words, mm -hmm. there's an agreement with Gorbachev that they would take any of those countries that left the Soviet Union, they would not become part of NATO. So that, that's it. That, that, that was done. That was done. Yeah. What happened is they reneged on the agreement. You got Poland, uh, Lithuania, Romania, all those little bitty countries became part of Romania because they wanted to circle Russia. And, uh, and the whole problem is that's, that, that's damn stupid because Russia has never been a, a, an expanding power. And like they reneged on their pro promissory. And they, 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 they reneged on the thing. And I Russia said it was they, they, like they, they, were not going, they were not going to go into Ukraine. As he said, they were not going to, Ukraine has not become part of NATO. And no missiles are going there. Now, matter of fact, we want you to take out all the missiles from all those countries that was formerly part of the uh, Soviet Union. Okay. If you don't, we're going to take military action. Will it come in on that? Sure, sure. I'll just comment on that. I, I, just, I have an issue with both sides. Because I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, uh, pro-U.S. I'm talking, I'm talking as far as Joe Biden and, and so the, uh, the Biden administration as well as uh, Putin. Because Putin also being a former KGB That's right. uh, yeah. officer and stuff like intelligence yeah. officer and stuff. And then also his connections to Trump and stuff. You know, and then his disdain for former President Barack Obama. So if you read the books and stuff like that, because that uh, uh, there are different books that expose a lot of this stuff about Putin. There's a book called Russia. It's called, it's called a Trump and, and Russia, and it talks about Putin and by this guy named Seth. He's a writer, investigative reporter, that talks about this whole connection. And then you got Craig Unger's book talking about, uh, talk about the house of Trump, house of uh, Putin, right? So you got the house of Trump, house of Putin. See, um, Putin is a multi-billionaire. Oh, yeah. He's got over six hundred million. I mean, he's got oh, billions yeah. and billions and billions. Uh -huh. So, and then he's just like in those movies, The Equalizer. You with Denzel Washington, the first one where he talked about these Russian oligarchs. He's all they're all part of that kind of stuff. And and you got the you got Biden. Basically, he got money. He got you see the thing about from it's just, China. It's, from it's China. Just, it's just a save. Oh, excuse me. Just a saber rattling going on to me. It, but see, you got the Russians that are doing the military exercise and stuff like that. And I think that what they do, you're gonna see a false flag operation or something. Something, or something, they're gonna do something, a bombing, a terrorist bombing, or something, and then you're gonna, then the U.S. or whoever, gonna, they're gonna, and then Ukraine, and then they're gonna go into Ukraine. I'm talking, try to go into Ukraine, and so, but see, the what they're doing, just like you said, I mean, the Russians and Putin are trying to prevent the Ukrainians from joining NATO, okay? But NATO's not, they're not a sink, not a sink, uh, a nice group either. NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, they were involved in assassination attacks on Libya. They were involved in all kinds of attacks and destabilizing Five, Central Asia minutes. and other places. Okay, so, I got so. six minutes, you know what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what, we, 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 we're winding down. You know what, um, I, I would like to say, you know what, these are phenomenal people. And you know what? They have a wealth of knowledge. And you know what? You, whoever has a television show, a radio show, uh, social media, play, you should invite <laughs> Brother Randy Evans on and you should invite Dr. Lee Warren on so they can share their wealth of knowledge with you. See, I'm not selfish. <laughs> and, but see, I don't own and I don't own their knowledge. What I'm saying is, and if you want to get in contact with me, I can get you in contact with them, but you ought to have them on your platform so you can share this information because they have magnificent minds. They have magnificent platforms. Okay. I just wanted to add that. You got a finished statement. I'm going to finish out, though, but go ahead. There's <laughs> no problem. I'm not going to, because I know you're, 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 you're limited in terms of time and everything like that, so I'll be quick. I'm just saying that. I think that there needs to be some kind, of mm -hmm. peace, some kind of agreement where they can reach some kind of agreement, but they're not going to do it because Putin already has plans to try to do some things and stuff. And that also it, it appears that the same kind of stuff is going on. And But see, 
the U.S. I'm talking about, you know, you have the, you have the Secretary of State, okay, Blinken, right? Mm -hmm. Anthony Blinken. Now, he's talking about uh, using some of uh, Colin Powell's, you know, this whole kind yeah. of preemptive, uh, act, preemptive five, 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 action okay. doctrine, right? You're going to take, talking about that we're going to take action to prevent a war, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's something needs, we need to watch that. We need to watch on both sides. And I'm not part of any of that. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to say we need to step back and observe and watch what's going on. So Let I'm me sorry. finish with this. Remember one thing, like I'm going to say. Remember, America has a hegemony mm -hmm. over the whole world. Mm -hmm. Russia never did have hegemony. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that meant. Hegemony means world power. World okay, power. all right. <laughs> see, see? Okay. You look at South America, the way yeah. South America is today, it's a result of us dipping in yeah. business down there. Mm -hmm. And right. George Washington and Abraham Lincoln said this, keep your uh, business outside of these small countries. Let them work it out. We right. don't need to be in no damn country. Okay. We've got too many problems here. Yeah, absolutely. And Dr. Lee Warren, you got a finished statement. What time does your show come on and how they get in contact Every Wednesday from 8.30 to 9.30 on Channel 36. And uh, it's re-shown from 10.30 to uh, 11.30 on uh, Channel 36. And you can go to my website, uh, uh, plem2.org. And I'd like to say this one thing. I'd like to say this, especially to African-Americans. You need to go and do some research on vitamin D3, 10,000. Mm -hmm. The reason people, the African-Americans was dying like flies, they was to say, why are they dying? They got low level of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. University of Chicago did that. Even the Chinese are dying because they got yeah. a low damn level of vitamin D. That's the sunshine yeah. vitamin. I got yeah. you. Yeah. As-salamu alaykum. And you know what I want to say? Thank you to say hi to Master Del Farouk in Chicago, Master Del Fatir, where I go at a 47th in Woodlawn. I gotta get it with plug and MCC Majd it. And I want to give a thank you to Joe Biden for pulling the troops out of Afghanistan and letting more and more Muslims come. <laughs> to the United States of America, and I wanted to put that out there, that Chicago is a sanctuary city, okay? Meaning that Muslims, you can come and enrich Chicago with no, no, um, with no repercussions. So Joe Biden, you, there are other cities, you can go to Boston, but I want you to come to Chicago with your means and your ways. All the Muslims that can come to the United States of America come from Afghanistan. Come on, and I want to thank, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clap for Joe Biden. Joe Biden is all right, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> okay, as far as I'm concerned, because that was the best move pulling up out of Afghanistan and let the Taliban take back over, which was rightfully theirs, and letting more Muslims come to the United States of America because they pray five times a day. They observe Ramadan. Okay. Let, let me they pay the zakat. Let me ask you this. Are they, willing to show, are they willing to shed blood for the United States? I don't know. Well, that's what they're going to have to do. I, I, I would hope so. That's what they're going to have to do in the But end. you know what? But I mean. All these people that come here today, they came here for economic reasons. Yeah, I understand. But, but I'm saying but, the country, this country is not the same country 50, 50 years ago. I understand. And but, see, and we got a lot of enemies. Yeah. But and I'm see, encouraged. And they're going to come over here and take, take what, 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 what this, we've done. This is going to fall anyway. Oh, yeah. That's you what okay? I'm saying. It's going to so fall. I'm encouraging I'm, Muslims <laughs> to come to the United States and come to Chicago. Again, <laughs> this is a sanctuary city because if you can let Hispanics come in, oh, yeah. you, let you can let in. Muslims come in. Lord, Miss Lori Lightfoot, I know you would agree with that because you believe in sanctuary city. It just doesn't go for Hispanics. It goes for Muslims and thank you to, for Joe Biden. Right. You know, I think you're a great president. And also black Haitians. Okay. And black Haitians. Come on to Chicago. This is going to fall anyway. But you can enrich it with your dean of Islam by coming to the United States. And I want you to come to Chicago. Okay. So they're going to mess with the tax money anyway. We might as well give it to some Muslims. You made me a proponent of sanctuary city.